Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the PHNX Rising Show brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook app. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a Friday night edition of this show, so I'm looking forward to it here with my my good friend, my good partner, Owen Evans. How you doing, sir? You know what? I'm going to say I'm tired and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Uh, made the error of picking the hotel that had the boys in it, and those boys were playing cards. I could hear them through the paper-thin walls of that hotel until... Early hours of the morning after that game. Boys, go Should to bed. Don't kidding me away. Well, you know what game they're playing? I just playing? wanted to sleep. I, I have no idea. All I know is at one point, a certain goalkeeper might have been getting quite heated. I, I'm, I get a feeling like it's Lalo. No, no. No? no. <laughs> the other one? <laughs> oh, well, uh, the boys I'm are not naming before. names. I'm not naming uh, names. There's only two goalkeepers, so. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Thank, uh, thank you for that info, uh, Owen. We have a great show uh, today. Um, like I said, it's going to be a Friday night edition. We're going to try to keep it positive. No, not too negative today, you know. Um, but uh, what's it called? Yeah, we're going to be talking, obviously, about the game tomorrow against Colorado. Uh, some pretty big news uh, that happened this week as well with the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, talking about some uh, Sacramento Republic making it to the final of the U.S. Open Cup. And then uh, taking a look around the USL. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun time. So, Owen, let's just get started. What's going on with Colorado? You know, from what I was able to research, they seem like a fun team to watch because they score a lot of goals. But on the other hand, they also give up a lot of goals. And uh, they have three guys that are in, like, the top 15 uh, as far as scoring in the league. So, you know, they, they get those goals in, you know, something that Rising <laughs> hasn't. Uh, experience too much this season but what can you tell us about them and what can we expect tomorrow but they score goals yes of course that they, is. Score goals. Um, the show, is <laughs> <laughs> they score goals they score goals yeah um we'll mm -hmm. leave it at that no uh Hadji barry uh obviously is the main guy like he's defending mvp um mm -hmm. he's a very good player he's been a little bit not quite as lethal as he has last year he's dropping back a little bit more than he did last season uh, and getting involved in the build-up, but that's because he's got other guys up there who are also a really big problem in terms of Alvis Almo, in terms of Michigan Galina. Um, good players, and even then, Hadji Barry still leads them in goals. 12 goals, so yeah, they're scoring a lot. In fact, if you look at their last few games, uh, which I'm just getting up the tally here, so it is three goals there, none against San Diego, but they scored four against LA, they seem to be on off on off lately, so maybe we'll get them on an off day. Yeah, maybe. the mm. The thing with Colorado too is that if you guys remember earlier in the season, they did have a lot of COVID issues. They, you know, a lot of protocols going on over there, so they had to reschedule a lot of games. And uh, you talked about this with Sam Dore in one of the podcasts you did a couple of weeks ago um, that their schedule is a little bit weird, and because of the they're having to reschedule. A lot of those games, you know, they, they had a game when they only had one substitute. And it's, so it just makes it difficult. So that hasn't really helped them. But it's also a testament to how good this team is, because even with all those issues, they're still third in the Western Conference. So, you know, it, it does worry me a little bit about what we're going to see tomorrow. Like I said, they do score a lot of goals, but they also give up a lot of goals. So we'll see and we'll see what kind of team we get tomorrow, basically. Yeah, it's. It's tough to tell, isn't it? Look, they're typically quite a lopsided team in terms of using the right more than the left. So you're going to see some challenge down there. That then raises the question on Phoenix's side, what are you going to do? Who are you going to put out there? Are you going to bring out Darnell King, keeping him on the left, as they did in the last game? Or are you going to look to move back to a Babu Kajai or Ryan Flood? Even Flood's been kind of absent lately. Not really sure why, but he has been kind of absent lately. So mm -hmm. we'll see what they choose to go down there. But that could be... The, the side of the pitch that Rising's got to defend a little bit better than, than the other side. Yeah, for sure. Did you like the the fact that Kalistri and King kind of swapped positions during that last game? I, I felt Kalistri did okay. I think uh, even Rick Schantz mentioned he kind of highlighted him about being one of the players that he liked on the field on Wednesday. What, what did you think of him? Yeah, I thought he did fine. Um, it's... As a whole, it felt like that performance was still, uh, you know, kind of... It was an improvement, but there were still a couple of times, especially in the second half, when we saw them kind of going a little bit more direct at times, Oakland. Um, mm -hmm. Felt as though they were still finding a lot of gaps in that rising defense. But but even then, look, it was, as a whole, the performance was better. The pressing was better. Um, mm -hmm. 
was letting them get the ball up in the final third. It was just they couldn't do anything with the ball in the final third. That's where the yeah. problem really was. So defensively, I think it was overall not too bad a game. Um, I still think there's little things to work on. But the question really is, is, is it a... Is that how you want to be lining up week in, week out? And I'm not sure that we want to go back to the 2020 Joey Calistri uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of situation that we've got had going on there, but we'll see. We'll see. And again, that's the point. We've seen this before. We've seen Joey as a right back with Darnell having to move over to the left in the past. Um, mm. So we knew that it, it could work. It has worked in the past, but I'm not sure that it's a permanent solution. Let's put it that way. For sure, for sure. Um, you know, you did mention the finishing in the final third for Rising. I, you know, looking at the numbers here on the USL website, it kind of paints a picture of you know why Colorado is in the spot that they're in. Uh, as far as goal conversion is concerned, it's uh, or shot conversion is concerned, they're twenty one point eight with their conversion rate when it comes to that. Now, when you look at Phoenix, I'm gonna let you guess what number. It's definitely above ten, but it's not as high as <laughs> as Colorado. I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to guess. I'm going to let you go ahead and just tell it's, me. Uh, it's 11% for rising. So, okay. and they have, they have approximately, I believe from what I saw, either 75 or more shots uh, overall throughout the season. So that kind of tells you what kind of team Colorado is. When they're in front of goal, they take advantage of these opportunities and they're great opportunities for them to be able to finish them and, and, uh, and get them, uh, get them on target and also get them in the back of the net. So, uh, 43 goals scored so far this season for Colorado, uh, but they do give up a lot of goals, which is 31 so far this season. So approximately 1.5 per game and they do have six clean sheets. But during their last five games, Owen, they haven't really performed that well. So they're one, three and one uh, during their last games and they have given up a lot of goals in their last two games, especially. So, it, you know, that's kind of more I feel like it's going to be more of an incentive for that team to perform better defensively and, you know, the way that they're playing, Rising should take advantage uh, of what's going on with that Colorado defense. You'd have hoped so, but it's still not a guarantee, <laughs> is it? The problem is, again, as you mentioned earlier, Colorado had so many weekends where they're kind of doing that Friday, Monday kind of thing. And it's mm -hmm. either been they've had that on that weekend or it's the weekend before or the weekend after. And so well, sometimes both is the weekend before and the weekend after. And so mm -hmm. you're kind of just stuck in that, that position whereby it's hard to really give it your all and they're coming in the rested team now. Um, mm -hmm. They played last Friday. Yes. But you know, they've had now over a week off. They've got a solid week off after it and pretty much a week off after that as well. So they're in a better position. They will be a little bit more rested more so than we've seen in recent weeks, at least. So mm -hmm. mm, I'll have to yeah, see. And of see. course, the other thing to note in there is that Kose will be suspended for Phoenix Rising for this upcoming game. I'm not entirely certain if there was no appeal or if the appeal was denied. I believe mm -hmm. I'm leaning more towards the there was no appeal, but he will serve a one game suspension for his red card on Wednesday. So he'll be out tomorrow. Yeah. I was surprised about that because reading uh, the, the preview from the Rising uh, website, uh, yeah, they, they specifically mentioned that Koza wasn't going to be part of the game. So I was like, there wasn't any appeal? like Because it, it didn't seem like a red to me. So I don't know if The problem kinda... comes from the fact that there are, to be clear, there'll be more cameras than, uh, than we get for the broadcast. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it also relies a bit on what the referee has written up, really. Because there's yeah. a lot of scope for what can be, especially in a situation like that, there's a lot of scope for what can be a red card for different things. Mm -hmm. And so it 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 varies. In in reality, if they're going to overturn it, they should be able to look at it and say, "Okay, we can see a factual error that was made. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's not as severe as was given." But the problem with certain things is obviously you don't quite get that factual. It's a judgment call. And even mm -hmm. if you look at it and say that's really harsh, sometimes it's not enough just to be harsh. It has to be yeah. wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> two different things. Overturned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, now that we're speaking about rising, obviously there's some new faces that uh, might be available, should be available on Saturday. So uh, were you able to speak to Rick about that? Any uh, any comments from him in regards to that? In indeed. So Wednesday night after the game, asked Rick about those two acquisitions that he had made. And here's what he had to say. 
Well, right now, with, with what happened to Musa, I'm not sure if Fercranis will be in yet uh, on, on Saturday, but having an athletic, strong, powerful center back, I mean, this guy can really run. Uh, it gives us, you know, the ability to really step up and press teams and, and not have to keep the fullback so deep. And then uh, JJ is, is a, uh, he's, a <laughs> he's my kind of nine, you know, he's a finisher in the box. He's big, he's strong, he's powerful, good soft feet. Uh, he reminds me, uh, he's like a, a stronger, more powerful Rufat, um, and he's also a willing worker. You know, I spoke to him on the phone a couple times already, and he can't wait to be here. He's so excited. Uh, I think he actually flew in today, so he's in Phoenix tonight, and I'm looking forward to, to, the, to the changes. But uh, the team is coming together, and, and uh, we just have to keep moving forward and keep improving. But performances like this will continue to give us confidence. So yeah, those uh, players you had, Marcus Fakranis coming in on Tuesday, uh, the news that he was being loaned. And then Wednesday morning, of course, the news that the team had traded for JJ Williams from FC Tulsa. Obviously, we've spoken about these guys before, but uh, that's what Rick had to say. And uh, it's possible that we will see them in action as soon as this weekend. Um, we yeah. don't know what their shirt numbers are yet to Reese's comment here, but yes. Um, I, I I get the feeling that we will most likely see JJ Williams on the field before Marcus. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe just because as a defender, he might need a little bit more adjustment to getting you know ready to to play with the team. But as far as like JJ Williams being the forward, it's like, hey man, just get out there and do your thing. You know, we'll we'll make sure to to help you out. So uh, do you agree with that? Do you think we'll maybe see JJ Williams first, or kind of kind of we'll we kind of have to find out. I'm not sure. I feel as though there's more of an immediate pressing need, especially if James isn't available, which we don't yet know whether he'll be available or not to get another centre back in there. Um, knowing the current situation that they're also going to be struggling in the midfield as well. So Kev mm -hmm. can't drop back. Um, not that you particularly want him to anyway. Um, I think you, you want his presence in the midfield. Um mm -hmm. I wonder if maybe there's more of an immediate pressing need for Marcus to hop in than, than there is for JJ. But but at the same time, JJ is a guy who I know this that Rick thinks is probably more of a difference maker specifically than Marcus. JJ has been brought here to be a starter, um, realistically. He's, as he said just there, look, this guy is, you know, he, he's a little bit better in, in Rick's mind than Rufat was. So, wow. yeah, he... he <laughs> It, they are, they are. And I mean, a lot of the talk around this has been that, that at the end of the day, Roof, uh, sorry, not Roof, that's me mentioning Roof at now. I've got home on the brain. Um, but <laughs> JJ was, is meant to be the number nine that, that rising are lacking and all the talk has been about how rising are lacking a number nine. Um, I mean, look, there's a lot of things here in terms of, is he going to make as much difference when, of course, as, as I wrote a, you know, the other day, Rising's problems have been in creating chances in the first place a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, Michael says, yeah, yeah you got to get him the ball though. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I know that he does play, a, has played a role in places he's been in the build up. He does like to kind of drop back and, and work things out that way and help in the build up. But I, mm -hmm. I don't know realistically, you know, it, uh, service is very important. Of course, yeah, no, and that, and that's my main concern. I, I don't think necessarily it was a striking a striker problem because when Hurst was there and he he was getting you know the ball and get crossing and and Rising was able to actually create build up plays. I don't think the 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 striker was the issue uh, at that point, but we'll see. JJ Williams paints me as a guy that's going to work hard defensively, which I know it's kind of one of the detriments of having maybe someone like Antwi out there that will not be able to really run the 90 minutes or, or give you much defensively. Uh, Greg Hurst as well. I think he's improved this season from what I saw at the beginning of the season as far as him pressing defensively and his positioning. But, you know, if J.J. Williams is able to do that, maybe that will create some turnovers in the midfield, you know, and like you're saying, he likes to drop back be part of the buildup. So I think maybe that just gives the team another dimension. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens and, you know, hopefully something good comes out of this. But my concern, and this is where my concern comes in here, and I'm sorry, I'm turning back over to the negativity. Um, my concern is the impact that this is going to have on the wings. Um, mm -hmm. I know that Marcus Epps wasn't the most popular person here, uh, but he did 
create a fair amount, though, even if it wasn't as flashy as people would have liked. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I feel for the guy. He was replacing Solomon Asante. That's not easy. That's not easy for anybody. But the problem is now is what is the, rea the reality of the situation on the wings? Right? We've got Santi Moa. We've got Greg Hurst can play out there. Not necessarily that we want him playing out there frequently, but he can play out there. Yeah. And then you're looking at the other options, which are, okay, Joey Kalistri. I mean, you can, but at the same time, it looks as though... No, no, and, and seriously now, it looks as though there's a chance that he may play a little bit more defensively as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got to be uh, prepared for that. And Lamin Jaune, who I'm... <laughs> I all all signs point back to Lamin. Look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I I mean even the chat is having a go at Lamin again now. Um but at the end of the day, I, I just don't personally think that with Lamin out there you're fixing rising's problems. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I, I've kind of got some concern about that. I know again Marcus was not the most impressive, um, but he still did create certain things. You look at some of his metrics, he wasn't as bad as mm -hmm. as necessarily some people like to get on his back about. It's just that he wasn't solo. Um, which again, that's a real problem because he's trying to replace solo. Yeah, he's no, brought and, in and, to replace solo, but that's yeah. you know, no one I else agree. here is solo either. Yeah. And I think it also I think what might have happened is that uh, some other players are underperforming as well. So now him being new, taking over that position, taking over the number. It's it's like you put a lot more pressure on this guy to perform. And, you know, he can only do so much. He, he, he was great in creative chances, maybe not the best finisher. And that's something that I criticize him heavily on because some of it just seems like he just didn't want to take a shot on target or when he did have an open spot, he didn't take the shot. And so that was the frustrating part. I, on my I'd end. like to introduce you to Lamin Jaune. <laughs> So, and I said this, I said this, like, you know, when, once I, I saw Rising kind of struggling on this end, you need someone on the wings that's able to break down their defender, able to create chances for someone else. And, and Marcus Epps was that guy, but it just, something that just didn't go his way as far as the last pass or the, the shot on target. So it's, it's rough. It's been rough <laughs> overall in the, in the, in the forward spot. But here's another question I have for you now that JJ Williams is here. We've seen Antwi be the starter as far as the nine is concerned, being in the forward. What happens with Repetto now? Is he going to get to see the field at all? Is it? Is he now what fourth? Fourth in line? I'm that's, trying to work out. This is the way I'm going for the shrug. I'm giving you a shrug. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I feel as though, yes, they were looking for pace on Wednesday. I understand that, but putting Lamin Jaune as the centre forward while Claudio Repetto sits on the bench is a statement. Um, it may not be intended as a statement, but it looks mm -hmm. like a statement. And it portrays a degree of confidence in the boys, um, in him in particular, that you'd rather put Lamin Jane up top than a guy who's been scoring goals in this league mm -hmm. in the past. Now, to, to, to the point here, look, I mean, Claudio was touted as the, the true target nine when he came in. It didn't work out. Um, it hasn't been working out so far. Um, but I will say that JJ comes in with better numbers than him. Um, he does come in with a substantial, uh, substantially, substantially higher XG uh, per 90 over the past. So yes, I, I sometimes am skeptical about using XG on individual players too much because, hey, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's kind of a product of a lot of things, not just one player, but still there's a stat there. Um and at the end of the day, I think he can be an improvement. The problem is everyone right now is under improving, uh, underperforming. Everyone is underperforming in, in various ways, with the exception probably of Ben Lund. Um And so the idea that someone's come in with decent enough stats and therefore will turn the season around, I don't buy. Someone's coming in with good stats, they can turn the season around. That's a different uh, prospect. And I think that what we're looking at here is a guy who can turn the season around, but... There's not too much time. He's got to gel pretty quickly. He's really got to hit the ground running because, again, there's, what, 14 yeah. games left to play? Mm -hmm. It's not long. He's got to get going. Yeah, for sure. Uh, before we wrap up this uh, conversation on on the players, uh, do you see Arturo maybe getting some minutes? Uh, have you heard anything about that? Uh, wait and see. I, I don't know yet. There's one other thing that I forgot to point out in this one um, before we move on. Uh, 
going back to Marcus slightly, but we do have some comment. This was also from Wednesday when I asked Rick, you know, what would be the passing words to Marcus as he departs? And here is what he had to say. Uh, it just didn't work out, you know. I love Marcus. He's a good kid, and, and uh, I think it was a little bit hard for him because in preseason we were teaching him the way we want to play, and he really bought into it. But as we went through our struggles, uh, we started to make some changes, and I think he lost his confidence along the way. But uh, he's a good kid. He's a great player, and, you know, I, I told him, I said, it's football sometimes, you know, and the team needed something a bit different. And But I think it's a win for both groups. You know, he's going to Tulsa, and... Uh, I think he's going to do well, you know. Thank goodness we don't have to play him. That last part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I think Rick kind of hit it on the nail with that. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And it's not like he's he's a bad player or he was a detriment to the team. But just sometimes, like he said, things changed. You know, if Rising was winning, you know, he'd probably still be here. But it's it just didn't work out that way. Speaking of former Rising players... Uh -oh. You know who I saw at Laney College? Let me just see. Who did I see at Laney College? Are you asking me? I'm not going to guess. Give me a guess. Give me a guess. Give me a guess. You ain't guess on the percentage one, so I'm not going to guess on this one. Oh. <laughs> Certain midfielder who may have departed the club this season. Oh. Hmm. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. I wonder if the chat might be getting warm here. <laughs> I think they got it. I them. think they might have got it. Yeah. <laughs> is it is he from that area? Is that why he was hanging out over there? No, no. The heck? So is yeah. he joining Oakland? Is he joining Oakland? You breaking some news for us? You'll have to wait and see in the near future, I'm sure. Ooh, look at that. Look at that chat. That's what you get with Owen when he travels, you know? <laughs> Saturday and uh but yeah, well that interesting words, you know, just to wrap up the Marcus Epps thing, going back to that. Uh, interesting words from Rick. Uh, it just doesn't work out sometimes. And I think when you're a professional player, I think you have to acknowledge that, that sometimes either the system fails you or the just the team doesn't work out. And sometimes it's time to move on. It, it doesn't mean that you particularly did anything wrong. You know, he could have done more, I felt, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, and it, it's it's a problem. I feel as though it's, it's sad. He, he's a casualty of a system that just wasn't working. And mm -hmm. that goes well beyond himself. Um Ultimately, Rick has determined what he needs, and what he needs in Rick's mind is a new number nine. And so we've got a new number nine. Um, and sometimes that's just the problem. When you're a player who doesn't play in that position, you are you can be the price to pay. Um, mm -hmm. In this case, yeah. look, if you're going in for a guy like JJ Williams, clearly Tulsa do value you. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, for sure. All right, They're on a bit of a turnaround. They're not. They're on a bit of a turnaround lately. So, yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Because, uh, yeah, it seems like they're they're giving up a lot of players too. They're just revamping. That's what it looks like. So they're preparing. For Remember, Sam said that he feels they can be challenging for a title as early as next year. So uh, we'll have yeah, to see. Yeah, he's that one for sure. For sure. Um, Owen, let's talk some predictions for the game. Look, I'm gonna go out on a limb. <laughs> I know that's probably not gonna happen. But I'm predicting a 3-2 victory for Rising. I know they haven't scored in forever, but I feel like they can score three tomorrow. You think they're going to score three goals tomorrow? That's what I'm saying. I'm going out on a limb. But yes. Well, you know what? I'm going to go with a 2-0 loss. I'm going to be negative. Uh, chat, feel free to hit us up. But of course, if you too would like to imagine that Rising are going to score three goals tomorrow, then boy, have we got the product for you, Ramon. <laughs> Would you like to introduce us? Yes, uh, you guys can download the DraftKings. Uh, is, are we talking DK? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna talk DK real quick. Oh uh, uh, no, yeah. I was about to toss to something else. <laughs> I think Michael gets it. Michael gets it. Oh man! All right, all right. We'll go since Michael said it, and I owe him a, uh, I owe him a beer tomorrow. So if you guys <laughs> want to, you guys can actually get some OGs products from our friends there at OGs. Uh, they just launched their first ever limited edition seasonal flavor which is piña colada. It's a perfect pineapple and creamy coconut blend, which you can enjoy. Uh, you guys can check them out online as well and purchase their products on their website, ogsbrands.com, and also on Instagram, which is at, at ogsbrands. And you can also find their products at your local dispensary if you're like that type of guy, you know, because when I go shopping, I like to, you know, I'm a big guy. So sometimes like when I buy stuff online, it doesn't quite work out. So I like to be there in person and check it out. So if you guys go to your dispensary, check out their products. You're going to find it right there. 
you guys can get it right there and then. And uh, just a quick reminder, you must be 21 years or older to purchase. And again, check them out, OG's Brands uh, at ogsbrands.com and purchase your products. All right, sir. Uh, yeah, we got some predictions here on the chat. Uh, Harry's right, looking. We he's do, we do, we do. Straight tie. Look at yeah. that. Harry, two, two, two. That's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, should we should we get some some odds? Actually, some we'll mods move on here. to the next bit. I know you wanted to talk about DK. We'll we'll talk about them maybe in the USL games coming up. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do um, it. Right. So you said three two, correct? So that at the moment is plus two thousand. Get some money. I'm nice calling. Odds. Nice odds. Three two. He's getting some money there. Um, I said, what did I say? Two 0 to Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. So that is plus uh, fourteen hundred. That's so. crazy how the odds jumped that much. It's, I mean, mm. but some good no, stuff. Like uh, we got some other comments here. What was it? Harry with the two all. Two all mm -hmm. is plus twelve hundred. Not bad. Not bad. Michael on the 2 1 is plus 950, uh, which is the same as what Reese said. Uh, 3 2 2 sw switchbacks here with a Rick out. Unfortunately, I can't give you odds on, on Rick out, but I can give you odds on 3 2 to switchbacks. Uh, and that is plus 2000. Nil nil draw says our good friend Phoenix Rising Nation. That's plus 1900. If they draw, if they draw for a fourth straight time, that would be incredible. Like it's. Do you want one fun? Do you want a fun one? Yeah. Who wants to really, really, really take the big bet? Oh man. So the, no. Here we go. Four all draw <laughs> is plus fourteen thousand. Jesus. Is anyone gonna put? You got to check some cash on that, surely. I don't think it's no way in hell it's gonna happen. But hey, that's some yeah, money right there. My books on it. Nine zero says. I can't BG. give you a nine nil, unfortunately. They don't do odds <laughs> up to that high. I, I'd oh, love man. to, but I, yeah. See, Rising yeah. Nations, man, he'll do it. He says he'll do it. So thank you. Yeah, for I hear doing. Edward is gonna go and put ten on the four all draw, and if it comes comes good, he's gonna. Uh, Gonna have to remember his good friends here at uh, PHNX Rising for that one with the uh, the super chats. Please, someone show me how to bet. You know, if you look on our PHNX YouTube channel, you'll find some really informative uh, videos on betting from our good friends at PHNX Bets. That's how I learn how to bet. I... Lose all my money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're they're good stuff. Or Actually, easy. Um... <laughs> yeah, don't listen own... to our betting tips. No, 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 no. Watch the betting show if you want some betting odds. So not, not. Don't listen to us. But anyway, uh, big, uh, big. Uh, I'm kind of going uh, off the path here a little bit. But I didn't know what a switchback was, and I was mentioning this to you. I don't know why this is so interesting to me. In chat, feel free to roast me. But you know, uh, English is my second language, so I, like a lot of these terms, I have no idea what they are. So I looked it up, and a switchback. I'm trying to find it here. Is a sharp turn in a road or path as it traverses a steep incline. So uh, I, I thought that was interesting. Whoever's listening to this, if you if you think it's interesting as well, I thought it was some kind of rodent, but apparently not. So but. could this be the switchback in rising season? There you go. Boom. There we go. Ooh. You said it. Now it has to happen. Or so. could it go in the complete opposite direction? They get absolutely. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, put, I put odds on that. We'll right see. We'll see. Let's continue on here and talk about around the USL. I feel like we should have like a, like a voice effect. It's like around the USL. Anyway, uh, Saturday, they got a lot of games going on. Uh, I haven't taken a look at this. Uh, we have uh, Orange County hosting Loyal, El Paso hosting Louisville. Look at that. That's going to be fun. Um, a lot of great games this weekend. Any of them that uh, particularly catch your eye? Oh, let's have a look. Uh, Sacramento Republic are traveling away to Charleston. We've got a result against uh, Colorado Springs pretty recently, but... Mm -hmm. Look, it's the question to me of our Sacramento still on the hangover from Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you see that cup runs do that, especially because Sacramento have struggled lately in the league. They haven't been picking up as many points as they usually would. So let's mm -hmm. see if they can turn things back around. They are favored here. They are plus 100. Charleston at plus 190. Draw is plus 285. Uh, but yeah, to me, that's one. Can Sacramento start to get their league campaign back on track right around when they've you know, really... Made history, club history at least. And they're also the first team in the current incarnation of USL mm -hmm. uh, to make it to 
the final of the U.S. Open Cup. So you want to talk about that now? Because uh, it, it was huge, man. Like uh, after the show the, wrapped up on Wednesday, you know, I, I went over to ESPN Plus and I put that the game on. And just looking at the I think Sporting Kansas City had 31 shots <laughs> against uh, Sacramento Republic and they held on strong. You know, that crowd and, and they were, you know, helping them, uh, you know, uh, fight off sporting Kansas city. But once it got to the penalties, man, it kind of, it got a little spicy. I like that. I like the, there was one, uh, the Sacramento Republic keeper actually stopped one of the, the penalties, but then it was called back. And so that kind of added another layer of tension. And I liked it. I, it was a really good time watching the, those penalty kicks. I feel like, and this is, we all kind of sit around, don't we sometimes and say the stuff about, we don't want to prioritize the cup over the league. The league is the important thing, all of that. What Sacramento have done this season, I, I genuinely implore any rising fan in the chat. You can be, you can go, go tell me I'm wrong, and it's fine because you'll just be wrong. Mm-hmm. But you would swap places with them in a heartbeat in this current situation, okay? Even if right, and yes, okay, they're doing better than Rising in the league, so maybe that's a bit of a trick question. But <laughs> even if Rising was doing well. I feel like the only reason people devalue the cup is because they genuinely don't think they will make the final. Even if they do well, you'll have a good run. You'll get to the round of 16, eh, whatever, a quarterfinal maybe. To you, that's a good run. But if you had the chance now to just say, you know what, forget it, miss the playoffs, but you'll make the Open Cup final. You take it, surely. Because what they have done is... Mm -hmm so special in the context of this league Mm -hmm. i i just you know they shouldn't be there they're now 90 minutes away from the Concacaf champions league right that's insane just imagine having a Concacaf champions league night here in phoenix just imagine it yeah that's that's why i was kind of disappointed that they like rising bout out so early in the competition to sacramento republic so because that's what's on the line, you know. If you're able to make it that far and you're able to position yourself in, in, you know, in that spot, it gives you the opportunity, you know. The Concacaf Champions League, you know, it it'll bring them some money too, you know. So it's it, it's something that's going to help the club in the long term. It's going to pay a lot of the bills that are hanging around. So if you put the investment in there and you you know are successful, there, there's a lot of rewards at the end of the uh, of that journey. So it's it's something that I, you know, I, I love to see Sacramento go for, but it just hurts me because I know rising had that opportunity, but we'll see maybe, maybe next year or the coming years. Still fantastic, fantastic achievement. And you mm-hmm. look, uh, whatever you want to say about Sacramento, you can't ever, ever take that away from them. And to their fans now, I know the tickets went on sale for them. They've got their away section in Orlando. Not bad price, actually 30 bucks for a final. Uh, wow. That's not too bad for a final, but yeah. look, it, just just enjoy it just enjoy it you know what who cares about the result okay just accept time. you're there you're in the u.s open cup final enjoy mm-hmm. the moment because days like that do not come around very often in fact this one doesn't come around until september so you've got a while to build up to it but there you go. just enjoy enjoy the night because it's a special one mm-hmm. um one last thing about that i really hated the fact that the mls twitter account didn't acknowledge Sacramento, like they put out like a, a graphic of Orlando and their keeper and whatever, but they didn't include Sacramento in the graphic, first of all, and they didn't even tag them on the tweet. And that was like some next level pettiness, which, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, didn't sit right with me. But anyway. yeah, don't, don't, wor- don't worry, Don. Cup's coming to USL. Don't worry, Don. It'll come. You home. can sit there with um, your expired some contracts. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we'll see. You know, good luck to Sacramento. Hopefully, they're able to get the W over there in Orlando. All right, y'all. Uh, but yeah, back we... to what? What are we doing here? Phoenix Rising Nation. Shout out to him in the chat here. Uh... Jesus. Oh my God. Enjoy, guys. Thanks. They're way cre- way too creative in the chat. They, uh... they are. <laughs> um other games uh we got Indy uh hosting tampa bay rowdy so that one should be good tampa bay is on a tear right now you know that's so <laughs> hopefully indy's gonna be able to do something against that and then uh sunday we have the last game which is red bulls hosting new mexico united so um yeah honestly you know i think rising colorado is kind of i think it's probably the game of the week for me just as far as storylines and what's going on in the league so we'll see 
We'll see what you want works. some uh, some money here, and I wouldn't normally bet on uh, Landon Donovan's boys to get it done, but at plus one thirty five, traveling away to Orange County. Have we talked about the rising ones? Yeah, the odds. Yeah, we, yeah we spoke about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. We spoke about the score lines at least. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. But but that's I think pretty. That, that those are pretty even for anyone who's not sure on that one. Uh, Rising's odds plus one thirty for Rising, plus one forty five for Colorado Springs. So Rising a slight favorite there. Plus two ninety if you're looking for a draw. <laughs> um, the money on that. But Louisville, if you think that Louisville can go to El Paso and get a win, that's plus one twenty at the moment. Easy money, baby. Get that. Yeah, and then anyone else of any note who wants to pick the best of the worst? We're looking at the best of the worst game. With they're not actually both bottom, but one of them is Loudon and Monterey Bay. Loudon at plus one thirty, Monterey Bay at plus one forty five. A draw there at plus two eighty five. Who are you taking? Um, I'll go with the draw on that one. I, I don't the know. Draw. Yeah, I don't know if I'm I taking Monterey Bay. I'm taking Monterey Bay. I'm. Ta- I tell you what, I'm backing mm-hmm. Frank Yallops boys. I am backing Frank Yallops boys in that game. Um, uh, I don't know if they win. You know, it kind of put Rising in the tough position <laughs> if they don't get a result tomorrow. But uh, but yeah, we'll see. Hope we'll see. Monterey's been playing okay off and on, so well, hopefully they can get a result as well. All right, Owen. Uh, since we're talking about uh, talking about odds, let's talk about our friends at DraftKings. So if you guys haven't downloaded the app. Make sure to do it. Again, it's the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And when you do so, you can use the promo code PHNX. And when you make your first deposit, you get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. And again, that's promo code PHNX only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Make sure to check out the show notes for more details. Monterey Bay Football Club United. <laughs> that's a Union, awful. I think you'll find. It's not United. It's Union. No. Mm. All right, Owen. Um, we did get some other news this week, uh, just to kind of wrap up the show here. Our friends at Valley United uh, are no longer a part of NISA, apparently. So, Well, they're uh, not operating this season. They may come back next year. Maybe, maybe. But maybe. Uh, if you guys you know, haven't heard, they were doing some shady stuff, basically, right? As far well, they, as were accused the- of, they were accused of some shady stuff. There you go. Um, we don't know all the details, of course. Uh, elements mm. of it have come out uh, via various media outlets. Um, and also, even by Nisa's own admission, there have been investigations that you know are ongoing in cooperation with the Department for Homeland Security. So those are not good signs, are they? If you're being investigated by uh, you know, Homeland Security and you're a football club, in Nisa, that's good. bad. That's yeah. very bad. But um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. To to like a football team, and then hey, you know, you got Homeland Security knocking at your door. <laughs> not that's good. Not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Yeah, you don't want the IRS, Homeland Security, any of that stuff. You never want those uh checking in on you. But uh, I got the statement here, and then what it says here: due to the complexities and time involved with the current legal issues surrounding Valley United, Nisa and Valley United have agreed that it would be the best for Valley to suspend all operations for the balance of the 2022 season. That's, that's something, man. <laughs> so, um, yeah. it, it does make me sad because, you know, I, I do like the fact that, you know, it, there, there was another team, you know, in, in, in Phoenix that, you know, people can go out, go out and support. Um, and, it, you know, it, I know it doesn't have to, always be you know rising but i did like the fact that there's another professional team uh in in the valley but it's sad that this happens and hopefully they're able to you know figure out whatever's going on and they can get back you know to to nisa next year see yeah and of course we know of course the head coach the general manager both resigned or well Mm -hmm. push or be shoved after the allegations again of things that came out of uh, visa issues and all of that but look it's yeah, there, Ther- Therese's comment here. There will be no PHNX Valley United. You're okay. You're good. You had like dozens and dozens of people wanting that. So, but now we can't. Dozens and dozens. Yeah, I, I th- <laughs> one or two, one or two maybe. Um, no, but hey, 
Yeah, um, I'm trying to check here on our Twitter account just to give you. Oh, look at that. We went up. Uh, the reason, you know, moving on from the Valley United news. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Twitter. We are at 634, Owen, almost at 650. And, you know, we'll give out this, this bad boy right here. Yeah, you know what we need you to do? Go out there, get your burner accounts and follow us. We know you've got them. Reese, Go I know them. you got like two or three. Michael, you got probably 20. I don't know. But, yeah, follow, make sure all those follow us. You know, help us out here. Owen's got a few burner accounts. That's where he gets all his information. I'm sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, make sure to follow us. Tell your friends. You know, I, I see the South and over there. I might have to give out business cards so that way you guys can follow us there. But, yeah, 650, we'll give this out. And then, uh, Michael, I haven't forgotten about the beer. So, you know, we'll, we'll take care of that tomorrow as well for, for getting the trivia question uh, right. So, all right, Owen, anything else? Uh... <laughs> oh, that's true. Sir. Look at that. Um, no, I'm can. not. No, not this one. This one was a gift, so I can't can't give it away. But if I find one, I'll uh, maybe. You can give it away. No, this one has the it has a script, it has a script, so it's more valuable or whatever. So it's the vinyl. Yeah, you can still give it away. I can, but I will not. You won't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was a rare find for me. So sorry, Phoenix Rising Nation. Maybe I'll see. I'm gonna dedication go to the to store. the cause is lacking. Oh. Sorry, man. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the record store, and if I find something good, I might give it out. But again, we need to get to 650 first before I start giving more stuff out. So, yeah, keep, um, keep boosting these numbers, boys. Come on, get those burners. Let's get going. Come on, every other PH and account seems to <laughs> 650. All right, y'all. Uh, can I permanently borrow it? No, 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 Reese. Um, but yeah, uh, we will be back tomorrow, Owen, uh, for the post game show. Hopefully, with mm-hmm. the positive show. I want to. I want to W, man. I'm tired. <laughs> I don't. I don't want no more draws or losses. Like, no, give me a W. Give me those three points. Send me home happy, so that way I can. Rumor, rumor has it that if they can finally win a game, Ramon is just going to get himself a bottle of tequila and down it live on air. That's what rumor has it. And in fact, you know what? Yeah. Smash that like button. Tell us that you want that to happen. No, I mean, smash the like button, but no, I, I will drink tequila after the game regardless because I'm going to the bad bunny night. Uh, but yes, I will not do it live on camera, though. But after the game, oh, I think you should. I'll post it. You know, we'll see. I'll let y'all know. how. He'll post it. There we are. As long as he posts it, that's OK. We'll let you have that. And uh, uh, no, we're not finishing with prayer. Rising Nation. Sorry. No, no, sorry. Sorry. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching us on this Friday night. Go out, have a good time. If you're staying home, chillax, have a great time. We will see you tomorrow for the post game show. No one else see you tomorrow as well. Take care, everybody, and have a great night.